got your Bibles, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. I'll begin reading that. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Verse 25 once again. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Tile my message. So much the more. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this night. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to preach your word. I ask you to anoint my lips of clay, anoint those who hear. I ask you to help us, Lord, as we uh, face this trying time in church history. In Jesus' name, amen. And so much the more. The verse says, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. I believe that day is approaching. What day? The soon coming of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm not going to deal with post-pre or mid-trib or pre-wrath. I'm just going to tell you, the signs are very clear that Jesus is getting ready to come. What do you mean? Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. We're in a great hour of deception. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You know, there have been a lot of people who have claimed to be Christ in the past few years. Sung Young Moon, Jim Jones. <clears throat> There's also sometimes people just get and say that they're Jesus returned. And sad to say, we even got to a point where a few years ago in the charismatic movements, they say if you got saved, you became a god. I don't see that in the scripture. Amen. One person I see in the Bible really preached that was in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, whenever the serpent came to Eve and said that we sh that he knows in the air you eat thereof, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Amen. And deceive many. Ye shall hear wars and rumors of war. I'll tell you, we hear war rumors of war. You know, I've wondered how many they, how uh, how many people this past year heard about the possibility of war of China. I wonder how many are now concerned we may be in, heading into another civil war. Sad to say, I, I'm 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 beginning to think we're heading that way at the civil war. And there could be other wars that'll rise up. Our nation is not exempt. It looks more and more like all the time like. We're heading for that direction. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. There shall be phantoms, that's people not having food to eat. I'm hearing more reports about that all the time. <laughs> And pestilences, that could include coronavirus. And earthquakes in diverse places. <laughs> All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're already seeing a lot of that. I'm telling you something today. We are in that hour. I look in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 
begin in verse 1, This also know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, or you might as well say selfish. Narcissism. When I hear people talk about narcissism, I can't help but think of men being lovers of their own selves. He'll say, but don't we need to love ourselves? When Jesus said, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself, he was not really given the command to love ourselves. He was given the command that we're to love our neighbors the way we do love ourselves. Some say, say, I hate myself. You know what the problem is? I think men are selfish by nature. And I believe it's actually dangerous to preach this doctrine of self-love. That's where I stand. You say, I'm having troubles to love my neighbor. Shouldn't I learn to love myself? I'll tell you exactly where you, what you do. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy spirit, with all thy strength, and thy neighbor is thyself. Those are the first two commandments. I am learning something. If I'm having troubles loving an individual, it's not because I gotta learn to love this guy. No, no. I gotta love God the way I need to. If you can learn to love God, I'll tell you what, God is a lot easier to love. <clears throat> he should be the easiest to love. And I'll tell you why. Because he sent his son to die for our sins. He gave his only begotten son on the cross for you and me. God commends love towards us, and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I've come to the conclusion, if you're having troubles loving your neighbor, you need to look at your love towards God. You love me. Keep my commandments, John 14, 15. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. I mean, people are out for the almighty dollar more than the almighty God. Boasters. I'll never forget hearing a preacher years ago. I listened to his tape. And brother, I'd heard several tapes of the same preacher, but this was one of the worst. I didn't get edified by his message. I didn't get offended by his message, so to speak. I didn't get mad. I didn't get challenged. I actually got exhausted listening to his exhausted preaching. Oh, he must have been real deep in the word, I wish. He spent so much time boasting on his own accomplishments. And by the time he got done, I was exhausted. Thinking this man plays, has three places to pray. He will not enter his pulpit on Sunday morning until he's prayed 20 hours. He just goes on and on and on. His boasting. All the souls he's won. All the counseling he's did. <sighs> exhaustive. <laughs> Boasters, proud, blasphemers, it's even within the church now. Irreverence towards God. <laughs> Disobedience to parents. I could harp on that. Unthankful. Are we really thankful like we need to be? We need to work on it. Unholy. I like the fact that unthankful comes before unholy. If you're an unthankful person, you're not a holy person. Amen. And I could cover some other subjects there. Without natural affection, that includes homosexuality, and I could point out some other sins too, but <clears throat> that's the main one. Truce breakers. How many people will make an agreement with another person, and in no time they've broke it? There was a time you could take a brother and shake his hand. That was good enough. Now, you do a contract, people have ways to get out of it. False accusers, incontinent, that's no self-control, fierce, despisers, those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. I fear that's going to happen more. So we're, I'm going to get on it. 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We're in a day and age where some people deny the power of God. Not only just the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but some people believe that God can't even save you and deliver you from the power and practice of sin. That's the ones I'm more concerned about personally. For us, this sort are they that creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, they with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Years ago, I went to Davis and Elkins College. There was a professor there, Dr. William E. Phipps. I can't help but think of the late Dr. Phipps when I read this. He wrote books, Returning to Biblical Sensuality. He wrote a book, Influential Theologians' Views on Women. He wrote several books, but the worst one of all was, Was Jesus Married? And he answered, Yes. I never forget, he had a little mole on his forehead. I often said that man could not wait till the tribulation to get the mark of the beast. I'll never forget sometime after I graduated from Free Gospel Bible Institute in 1985, I saw him. And I got talking to Dr. Phipps for a while, and he said, I told him about graduating from FGBI and all that. He said, well... I see that didn't affect your faith too bad. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. I believe we need Christian fellowship. Some people say, well, I get enough Christian fellowship when I go out and eat with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm not worrying about church. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. I'm going to say what I feel really felt on my heart this morning to say. I believe it's time we start opening our churches back up. I'm nobody. I'm probably the least of all the saints. But I believe it's time for these churches to start opening their doors. Because I believe we're in that last hour. And there's people who are going to need fellowship. You know, one of my big concerns is with this recent closing churches. is now that the doors are open. Many of them. They're fine. Many people are staying out. Now, I want you to know up front. I take this coronavirus issue pretty serious. It has affected many people. But do you realize there were diseases back in the first century? Do you realize there have been diseases spread around throughout the centuries? Yet many churches never closed their door. We're in the hour where many believe in divine healing. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. A chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. The Bible says Psalm 101, 1 through 3, 103, 1 through 3 says, Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases? How God anoint with Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts two thirty eight. When Jesus gave the great commission in Mark chapter sixteen fifteen through seventeen eighteen. 1718 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. No, I'm not a snake handler. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. No, I don't believe in hand, drinking deadly poisons. I think both of them are pretty well covered under accidental as we read in 
Acts 28. And then number two, back to if they drink any day thing, shall I hurt them? We don't know what poisons are in our food we eat now. Oh, I only eat organic food. We don't know what poisons are in our food. Well, I only eat I don't eat food that has pesticides in it. We don't know what poisons and chemicals are in our food this day and age. That's why I believe before we eat, we need to pray and ask God to sanctify the food, to kill the poisons. If I'm ever invited to your house to eat and you hear me ask God to sanctify, I'm not saying you're a bad cook at all. You might be a great cook. I'm not saying you're the poison at all. Not at all. We just don't know what's already in there. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know what? I don't believe that that just deals with cancer. That just doesn't deal with uh, people who've uh, had heart attacks, strokes, maybe even a non-contagious infection. You know, some people get infections in their body, but, you know, as long as we... Uh, Watch, you know, don't touch me. That leg is full of infection or something like that. You know, touch them up, you know, pray, lay their hands on their head. You know, I, 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 I you know, some people almost be willing to say, yeah, I, I believe we ought to do it. Somebody's in a car wreck or, or something falls on them and crushes them. We'll lay hands on them, pray, and believe God for a miracle. And sometimes we have seen it. Can I say something? I believe that even in, uh, involves infectious diseases. I'll leave that there. I'll leave that there. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Is there any, I'll tell you something this evening. I believe it's time we start praying against this coronavirus. I'm not, I'm not saying we should throw caution to the wind. I'm not against hand sanitizers. Some churches will have you wear masks. I'm not here to fight that. I take it more serious now than ever. I know some churches have had to close for two or three weeks because they had a corona outbreak. I'm not worried about that. I'm not even talking about them. I'm not against having hand sanitizer. I'm not against some of that stuff. But you know what I believe in the most? We need to get back to our oil bottles. I want you to know, I'm preaching this today. That we need to open the doors up. Having caught coronavirus in a church service, are you sure? About 80%. I can't get boldly say I'm. 100% sure that I got in the church. But I can say it looks by every indication that's where I got it. But I've seen these breakouts come and I've seen them go. <clears throat> I'm not saying throw caution to the wind. I'm saying it's time for the churches to get back to church. So much the more as we see the day approaching. We don't know what the next thing is going to happen. Personally, you talk about diseases like coronavirus, I'm more concerned about these riots in the land more than coronavirus. There's already been some churches broke into and even sat on fire. If those was a Bible-believing church, Lord, be merciful to those people. Because I believe they're automatically under the judgment of God. You don't destroy God's property and make heaven. I promise you that. This morning or tonight, I just want to challenge us so much the more. I know there's going there's churches that probably close and it'll be permanent. You know what I think it's time for? We have to go back to the first century church and meet in homes. But once again, I believe we need to open the doors. John MacArthur, a man I don't even agree with doctrally, because he is a 
Five Point Calvinist. I don't agree with Five Point Calvinism. But I have to commend him for the stands he's been taking in recent weeks. I believe it's time these doors of our holiness churches, Pentecostal churches, be reopened. And start having church again. So much the more as you see the day approaching. I believe Jesus is getting ready to come. Are we going to be found ready? Are we going to be fellowshipping one with another? Are we going to just sit it out? Say, I can pray at home. Yeah, we should pray at home. I agree. <clears throat> I can read my Bible at home. I, I do myself. But can I tell you something? I believe it's time we start getting to church. Start praying. I believe we need a revival in this hour. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. I believe apart from a revival, this nation's done for. I really believe that. Bible says, Psalm 9, 9 verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. All the nations that forget God. The Bible says, To whom much is given, much shall be required. This nation has had more gospel preached in it than any other nation. This church has had, this world, has, this nation has had more revivals than probably any other nation. Let's go back to the 1700s when, when Jonathan Edwards, after fasting and praying for three days, preached a message, sinners, in the hands of an angry God. And a great awakening broke loose. <clears throat> I think of it on later on when men like Francis Ashbury went out across this nation preaching, carrying the gospel. Oh, boy. You know what happened? Souls were won. You know how much of a sacrifice Francis Ashbury did? His mother and his father died while he was here in America. While they were still in England, he never was able to get to the funeral. Peter Cartwright, I believe a great man of God, greatly used in camp meetings. A man that actually had to stand tooth and nail strong against sin in his lifetime. Wasn't he the one who one time some people were threatening to beat him up if he continued on? So he said, listen, sirs, before I enter in this fight, I'm going to have to pray. He started praying, bowed his head and said, Lord, I know... I shouldn't be fighting at all right now. But Father, will you give me the power? Was it to beat these guys up or whatever? I forget how he prayed when he looked up. Those guys are gone. Charles Finney, a mighty revival, followed him. Many were saved. I know there's people condemned Finney to this date. I think you better be careful. I admit there's a doctrinal issue I'm very concerned about, but I've never been able to get the whole grip on it. In fact, one of the men that criticized him is the way I read his writing. He believes the same thing. But can I tell you something about Fanny? They said 80% of those he were saved underneath him stayed saved. Bars, and places like that closed down, other sinful businesses. 
Sometimes jails even had to close down thanks to Fanny. Not thanks to Fanny, thanks to God working through Fanny. D.L. Moody, a great man of God. I believe God has, what was a 50% retention rate. Sad, I believe it was Moody that kind of started the easy believism path. Not that none of us, not none of, that not all of his converts believe that, but it just seemed like he was the one start de-emphasizing hell. That's what I've heard. Still, he had great revivals. Billy Sunday, I believe he was a great man. But even then, things were happening in his ministry to start leading the church the wrong way. Finally, the Azusa Street Revival came. People were baptized in the Holy Ghost and spake in tongues. I'm telling you this, this afternoon... I believe we need to get back to the Azusa Street revivals. The same power, the same practices. And then great revivals followed. I believe Oral Roberts started out okay, but he started compromising. I believe people like uh, Jack Coe started out great. In fact, I personally believe Jack Coe was a great man. And finally, God took him, what, when he was only 37 or 38? You know, I've often prayed, Lord, if you see it, I'm about to fall, take me home. I heard a preacher one time get up and said, Lord, if I have, I told the Lord, if I ever bring a reproach upon the gospel, kill me. That's not the prayer to pray. The prayer to pray. If you're about, you see, I'm about to fall, take me home. Back to that preacher I heard say, Lord, if I ever bring a reproach, kill me. He did bring a mighty reproach on the gospel through some affairs he had. Thank God the Lord didn't kill him. Today, we need to get back to revival. And so much the more as we see the day approaching. What are we going to do? I believe it's time we pray for revival. In, Gal in Revelation chapter 2, there's a church called Ephesus. It was a church that started out very good. It actually had one of the greatest revivals recorded in the scriptures, starting in Acts 19. But you know what? After the commendation of uh, they got in Revelation chapter 2, I'll tell you what, based on the commendation, that's a church I'd like to belong to. They said, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. It's different schools of thought. I really believe the first love was actually involving soul winning. But let's look at it from this aspect. How many of us, when we got saved, we couldn't get to church enough? We long for that door to open. We wanted to hear the Word of God preached. But somewhere along the line, Business matters came in. Hey, I believe a man ought to work. And so that, I'm not down in that part. But you know, some are even afraid to come to church late. This afternoon, I believe we need to get back to our first love. I believe that will bring revival. Closing, there's a prayer I occasionally pray, and I need to pray more often and mean it from my heart. It's Lord, restore unto me the love and the zeal I had for you when I was a new convert. 
In Jesus' name. I think it would help each and every one of us if we'd pray that more often from the heart. That's another concern. What about the new converts? We're going to have to take care of them. Because there's many wolves out there who are interested in devouring the sheep. So today, let's start praying for revival. Let's start opening our churches back up and pray for revival. Let's reach out to the souls who are lost once again. Let's pray this too while we're at Let's pray that coronavirus become a historical thing. I believe it will if we really mean it from the heart. I believe it's a man-made virus. I believe if we pray against it, I believe God may give us favor. But, this, but until we're praying against it and obeying Him, how can we expect Him to give us favor? Today, let us be praying for revival. For our churches to get back on fire once again. And you know what? I just want to close with this. I think it's time we need to pray for revival. Draw a circle around each other, our own self, and say, Lord, please give a revival. Start revival. And start right here. God bless you.